Alhamdulillah, insyaAllah we resume our studies, our discussion of the Risalatul Jami'ah of Imam Ahmad bin Zaid al-Habshi. And as Sid, uh, Hussein has mentioned, that uh, what we have went through in the last session uh, was the introductory statements by Imam Ahmad bin Zain al-Habshi, uh, which ends with, Wabillahi tawfiq. And I don't believe I have deliberated on the meaning of tawfiq. Uh, so we will say a few things about the tawfiq before we continue on the arkan of Islam. So Wabillahi tawfiq. Yes. And it is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we arrive at the tawfiq. Yani, uh, it is through the assistance and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that a servant is granted tawfiq. What is this meaning? What is the meaning of tawfiq? A tawfiq huwa khalku kudrati ta'ah bin ab. It is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows the uh, ability to perform that which earns his rida in a servant. And its opposite is al-khidlan. That is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants the possibility and the ability for a servant to perform that which earns his anger, min al uh, that which is called willful disobedience. So that means to say both, yes, in, the, in our aqidah, Tawfiq wal khidlan is still under the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because nothing escapes his will, nothing escapes his power. Except that if he grants tawfiq to his servant, that is when the intention that we have corresponds with what earns his pleasure. It comes with his rida. And uh, conversely, uh, that which is khidlan is when we perform that which earns his ra. Which is why among the prayers of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is is that uh, or amongst the, the statements that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is reported to have said that the heart of uh, a human being is in between yes, the the two fingers of Allah subhanahu wa taala metaphorically speaking, meaning to say that it is rotating in between tawfiq wal khidlan the heart of a believer, and then furthermore. Uh, it is also known that the Salihi make the prayer, Ya Muqallib al Kulubi wal Absar, O you turner of hearts and turner of inward seeing and inward vision. Yes, establish yes, our hearts, establish yes, Kulubana upon submission to you or upon your religion. Uh, so, Abilahi Tawfiq, that means to say it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone that we, will, that we can be granted Tawfiq to perform the many things that is required of us the many things that is uh, securing our safety and security in the afterlife. Now let us continue then in the Arkanul Islam. According to Imam Ahmad bin Zain al-Habshi, Arkanul Islam khamsa, that the pillars of religion are five. The first being shahadatu an la ilaha illallah, to bear witness that there is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger. Arkanul Islam, uh, the pillars, let us say, of Islam are five, means that, uh, let us say that Islam is both the external uh, manifestation of the religion of Islam, as well as the, the proper name, yes, the proper name of a religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to mankind by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We know that, uh, the, the, that Islam is the name of a proper is the proper name of a religion based on the verses in the Quran where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Inna dina indallah al Islam." Indeed, the religion that is, that is accepted in the sight of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the religion of Islam. And furthermore, He said, "Afaghayra dinillahi yabghun." Do they desire other than the religion of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? Wallahu aslam aman fi samawati wal ard, whereas everything in the heavens and the earth submits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, therefore, this Islam yes, is, is a religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed unto the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam according its, uh, its rights, according its, uh, including its uh, rights and its belief uh, system. So, when it is said that the Arkanul Islam, uh, Khamsa, it means that it is. 
that a person's religion yes is not established except through these five pillars yes digaulihin nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam for uh, based on the statement of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam buni al islam yes from the word bana to build something or establish something the religion of islam is established upon five things that you begin with the witnessing of allah subhanahu wa taala uh, that annahu la ma'buda illa allah that there is that there is no deity worthy of worship other than allah subhanahu wa taala that muhammad is his messenger that you perform uh, the five daily prayers the the giving of alms or zakat uh, or the, what we call obligatory charity wa hajjul bait to perform the hajj wa saum ramadan and to fast in the month of ramadan so if you think about this as yes, to build uh, or rather to establish the religion of islam as a community as an individual yes requires not only inward belief but also external manifestation of the belief because to bear witness that there is no god but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and muhammad is his messenger requires affirmation both by the tongue and that by the heart but things like prayer yes especially once we study the fiqh of prayer the the the, the jurisprudential matters pertaining to to prayer uh, there are prayers that are better performed in the jamaah there are prayers which is wajib uh, on every let us say individual adult male like the fardu jamaah fardu jumaah as a jamaah there are prayers that is uh, that are better uh, which is uh, uh, there are uh, groups of people in uh, in which some prayers are better performed as a collective so we know therefore that when we say the establishment of prayer the yeah, salat here yeah, uh, it is inclusive of, of all that and we see that it is uh, uh, the the external manifestation of the religion becomes uh, becomes part and parcel of the the religion of islam so that there is izhar there is what we call the the shi'ar of the religion of islam uh, and in the establishment of salah there is the uh, the requirements of of tahara of purification uh, ablution in taking wudu uh, cleansing oneself in in terms of ghusl or, or taking the obligatory bath there is uh, what we also call uh, governance pertaining to masajid yes uh, or ruling pertaining to the houses of worship and uh, pertaining to adhan and so on and so forth so you see therefore that the when islam is performed properly when islam is understood and performed properly it becomes uh, the building of a civilization yes and this is interesting to to uh, to contemplate in light of what professor said nakib alatas uh, pointed out uh, of the the relationship between religion and civilization that he said that conceptually at least yes the term deen yes is connected to the term maddana the act of founding cities and the act of founding cities as maddana is the basis uh, linguistically of tamadun as a, a condition of society uh, a condition of a community of people that has reached a high degree a consummate degree of uh, humanity in terms of uh, in terms of spirituality in terms of ethics yes as well as in terms of knowledge and intelligence so the 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 proper establishment of the religion of islam based on these five principles will have reverberations in the establishment of the muslim community as an ummah and the establishment of the other aspects of religion uh, let us go through this one by one shahadatu alla ilaha illallah to bear witness that there is no god but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is yes, both the utterance by the tongue but Uh, which is a manifestation of internal belief that there is not there is no one yes la ma'buda bi haqqin yes in reality fil wujudi in the entire realm of existence other than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes the sharif the comment uh, the commentator in this case uh, dr ahmad yusuf uh, and uh, ad nasafi yes mention here that fi fil wujudi illa allah yes that in the entire realm of existence yes when when we say al wujud here it means uh, that which subsists that which exists certainly uh, it is a, a vision of reality and truth yes that includes 
uh, what we call the seen realms as well as the unseen realms, the alamul ghaib wa shahada, uh, the alamul malaika, uh, the realm of the, the, the angelic realm, the realm of the intelligibles, all these aspects of reality which have been mentioned, which have been stated by, by the scholars of the Islamic intellectual and religious tradition. Yes, within all these realms, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the deity worthy of worship. Yes, when we is the deity worthy of worship because of the attributes that we will come to and uh, we, we will come to perceive of him. We will come to study of him as he has described himself in revelation. Wa Muhammadan Rasulullah. Is a messenger, yes. Uh, Rasul, yes. Uh, the root word is irsal, um, which is to send a message, yes. So Rasul is a messenger who communicates a message from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to mankind. Now we know that he is not only uh, based on the agreement of the scholars that he wasn't only sent to the to mankind but also sent to jinns. Yes, and some of the scholars like Imam Subki mentioned that also, yes, he was sent uh, to the angels. Yes, he was sent to the angels. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the meaning of messenger is that um, he is uh, insan. He is a human being. Hurun, he is a free, uh, he is a free person, uh, not a bonded servant, let us say, uh, that he is a male. He is Salimun and Munafari Taban. He is free from characteristic deformities. Yes. And then, furthermore, he is also uh, free uh, in terms of his lineage. That means to say, both his father and mother are good individuals. Yes. Not people who are lewd in character, those who, who lack moral fiber. Yes. He is a man who is given uh, through, let us say, a special form of communication, which is our translation for this term, wahi, or revelation. And he, uh, uh, what he receives by revelation is a, uh, is a sharia. Yes, a sharia means a, a path or a, a way to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas um, other human beings we know in the Quran have been referred to as having received uh, Ilham, and some uh, like the case of the mother of Musa alayhi salam, it is said that she received a sort of wahi, but that wahi in that sense is not the specific form of wahi bi sharia. She wasn't given a sharia, she was given a sort of let us say premonition or a message in order to to secure the safety of her son to place him inside the inside the basket, let us say, to be floated in the river Nile. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so therefore, she, she is the prophet in this case. Or, uh, so the, on, on the other hand, a prophet or a rasul is a person who is given via wahi. Wahi is the means of communication. The content is that he is given a sharia. And then he is also commanded to disseminate it, to preach it, to teach it. However, if he receives a sharia, meaning to say a, a way of living, a way of uh, 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 rules and regulations from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pertaining to worship in other aspects of life, but he is not commanded to spread it to other people, yes, lam yu'mar bitabligi, then he is a Nabi, yes, just a Nabi. Uh, yeah, so therefore we say that all Rasul, all messengers are Nabi, yes, are prophets, but not all uh, prophets are messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِقَامُ الصَّلَاةِ So that's the first aspect. Yes. شَهَادَةُ أَلَّا إِلَهَا إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَأَنَّ مُحَمَدَ رَسُولُ اللَّهُ Already in this is, is, is contained so many things if you wish to contemplate properly. Yes, to bear witness that there is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this term ibadah, yes, or uh, uh, yeah, I need to, to worship something, uh, means to, to take it as your ilah, uh, to devote your, your time, to, to, to submit to it. Yes, or to submit to, uh, to whatever deities that you may have and to deny any other lordship based on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires knowledge, requires recognition of Allah's place in existence and it uh, requires acknowledgement of that recognition. But uh, following uh, uh, the kalimah shahada, 
uh, then what follows is the performance of salah. Iqama, yes, aqama, and yani from the, the root word qama, ya, who move, we need to stand to, to ensure that something is uh, yani ditegakkan in, in Malay, yani to, to establish it. It means to uh, to perform it continuously. Yes, uh, al-mulazamah wal istimrar. I mean to say to, to perform it continuously and for all the times which is required of it. Yes, based on the times that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, uh, has required of it, uh, together with all the requirements of the salah. Yes, to get together with the requirements of the salah. That is the meaning of the Iqamah salah. Uh, secondly, uh, ita uzaka. Yes, you need to give uh, the the, uh, the obligatory charity to those who have been selected by the Sharia who are worthy to receive it in the time uh, uh, in the time frame that is required based on the fiqh that, that is involved. Wasaumu Ramadan that is saum ya sama ya sumu literally uh, means kimsak that is to to withhold oneself for uh, throughout daytime. In the month of Ramadan, from all the things that may break the fast, yeah, or that may invalidate the fast, wahajul baik manistata ilahi sabila, and that is uh, to perform the, the the ritual of of uh, uh, yeah, any, uh, to perform Hajj, yes, migration to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, with the intention of all the rights that are required in the performance of the Hajj. Yes, uh, uh, in the event or if he has the ability to do so, as as sabil means uh, uh, a path. Yes. So therefore, these are um, uh, the five pillars of Islam, and these are all known. Uh, uh, or, uh, these these pillars are known by everyone, really. However, whether or not we have fulfilled the requirements, now that's the, uh, the other matter, and sometimes whether whether we actually perform them is another matter also. Uh, so then it is said, ma'al ikhlas wa tasbi. The performance of all five of these rituals uh, or five of these requirements of religion must be done with ikhlas wa tasbi. Must be done sincerely and with truthfulness. What is the meaning of al ikhlas? Al-ikhlas is to intend your, uh, your action or is to liberate your action from the trappings of self-ostentation or from riya. And riya is the action, uh, is the performance of action for the purpose of any other person, any other being, any other reason than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or to leave it, yes? To leave it for any other reason than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how to protect your, your, your amal in this case is to intend it properly for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we think about this, yes, this, this term al-ikhlas, yes, how it is such a, a great gift to mankind because it is truly the foundation of true ethics and morality. Ikhlas, on the other hand, requires ma'rifah, requires knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no such thing as ikhlas. We, we do use a cognate of that in our language. In the Malay language, we say ikhlas. Uh, meaning to say, I give this to you, expecting nothing in return. Yes, that is what usually they mean. But there is usually uh, a fragility of goodness when it comes to ikhlas without ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because how long? Yes, and, and to what extent are you willing to be uh, helpful? Are you willing to be kind yes, uh, to another person, to another being, if there is no expectation of, of any return from that person? Yes, and furthermore, you may be, uh, you may be willing to, to, to help a person provided, yes, uh, provided he doesn't harm you. Yes, but the term ikhlas, on the other hand, is more intense than that. It is not only not hoping any reward from the makhluk, from the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is also to be able to tolerate, yes, that which we may not like coming from them and continue 
uh, to uh, continue to perform and fulfill our our duties towards them. That is al-ikhlas. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the best person to have uh, to become to be the role model in this. How many? Yes, how many uh, how many narrations have we come across in which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam um, you know, continue to be kind to uh, to those who oppress him. Continue to be kind to those who uh, who, who spoke ill of him, uh, who continues to harm him, and so on, until the extent that uh, he won them over. How many of them they go on become Muslims in their life because of the degree of ikhlas exhibited by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? So ikhlas certainly is not required only in the in the performance of religious duties, but it is required especially, but it is also required in our day-to-day -day actions. It is the basis of, uh, you know, social, let us say, the social glue. Yes, the basis of, 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 of flourishing of human societies is individuals who have been granted uh, the quality of al-ikhlas. As for tasdiq, yes, ma'al ikhlas wa tasdiq. Wa tasdiq kabul al-kal li arkan al-islam al mutaqaddimah so ikhlas is to perform it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only or solely for the sake of Allah. As for tasdiq, it is the verification of the heart. Yes, that it is in fact the duties assigned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, because if you are performing any one of these five or all five of them, you must intend it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you must not desire praise. Yes, you might you must not desire adulation from other people. And certainly you must have, where Tasdik is concerned, you must have certainty that it is from the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has obligated upon his servants. Yes, uh, that you should not contend, uh, contend, let us say, with its obligatory status. Uh, in other words, the, uh, the, 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 the requirement of tasdik uh, requires, no, uh, requires knowledge. Sometimes, uh, in Ustaz, Assalamu alaikum. We cannot hear you. Is he here? Let me ask him. Wait one minute, shall Assalamualaikum, Ustaz. Waalaikumsalam. Okay. Okay, yes, Something the matter? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's okay. better than before. All right. Okay, then Alhamdulillah. So as I was saying, yes, the requirement of being certain in religion. Sometimes if our aqidah becomes gradually corroded, we may begin to wonder, you know, whether the requirements of religion are in fact from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You may say, well, what if some of these things are the customs of the Arabs? Yes. Uh, and that's how the early enemies of Islam, the Mushrikeen, the polytheists in Makkah, yes, they started accusing things. And later on now, amongst the Orientalists, those who have an enmity towards Islam, they try to suggest to the Muslims that, well, some of these things predated Islam, some of these practices. Or uh, perhaps that uh, although they have no proof, that, uh, that they, they, they can bring to, to, uh, to, uh, to establish their claim, they just, they just put it in, our, they write it in their books in order to create doubts yes, amongst Muslims. And they say, well, perhaps the Prophet Muhammad learned some, some of these rights from the Jews and the Christians and so on and so forth. Yes, but whatever their contention, yes, as Muslims, uh, you know, there is, through learning the possibility of removing all these doubts yes because we know that the religion of islam is established on firm epistemic foundations 
for firm foundation of knowledge. We know that the Aqaid and Nasafi. Yes, the, yes. You want to stop your video for a while? It's really, uh, it's a bit lagging. Okay, is it better? Okay, you can try. All right, is it better? Yes, wait, wait. Okay, then. As I, so, as I was saying, the, the problem of certainty, yes, uh, can be established if you study uh, the works of Aqidah, like the Aqaid and Nasafi, which is stated that uh, the, real, uh, the realities of things are established and knowledge of it is possible. The religion of Islam is established on the foundations of Khabar uh, Sadiq, yes, through report. And through report, in a, uh, one branch of through report, one now of it, yes, one, one type of it, is a report that is brought together by a community or a group of people in which our mind cannot conceive. They would purport together upon a line, or that they would create this as a line. And we study this, yes, the reports of the Ahadith, we study the Quran and Kari, and we know, yes, that whatever the commands, yes, especially of the Arkanul Islam, these are derived from the Quran and from the statements of the Prophet. And if we read his biography, we study the books of Hadith, gradually it produces a, a state of certainty in our heart. Yes, and that certainty is required. Yes, you be Allah. So it, it can dispel and remove the doubts in our heart that all this is indeed yes, the means to approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, we find in one of the hadith Qudsi, yes, mm, in uh, also cited in the Arba'in, the 40 hadith of Imam al Nawawi, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that my servant comes close or ne uh, draws near to me through the actions which I have obligated. Yes, meaning to say the far. Yes. So there is no other way. Yes, it is not laisa bi amani yukum. Uh, coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, approaching close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a matter of uh, fantasy, is not a matter of your own creation, yes, it's not a matter of your own um, uh, whims, let us say. Um, rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, yes, in, in clear verses, how we are to approach Him. And the Arkanul Islam is basically that, yes, it is that that standard, it is that clear criteria of truth that if we perform it sincerely, yes, ma'al ikhlas wa tasdik, yes, then he becomes a true servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, it is good that the author also mentions its opposite, yes, faman lam yakun muklisan bi khalbi, fahuwa munafiq. Whoever is not sincere in his heart, yes, then he is a hypocrite. Imam Ahmad bin Din is uh, uh, Mention the meaning here is that an man sadaka bi arkan al Islam kulliha min ghairi ayyakun mukhlisan that he where where performance is concerned he does all of that yet his intention in performing that is not ikhlas for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa taala then this person is a hypocrite this hypocrisy in this case nifaq in this case is the nifaq al amal meaning to say the corruption of his practices. So the amal becomes discounted. It is not the, the, the aqidah necessarily that becomes destroyed. Because sometimes where aqidah is concerned, this person when asked affirms that there is no God but Allah, affirms that Prophet Muhammad is his messenger, affirms that the, the, the requirements of belief that he believes in the Yaman afterlife and so on. But somehow when it comes to actual practice, he suffers from, from Riyadh. Yes, it's a, it's a sickness of the heart. He suffers the, uh, the, 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 the sickness that he still, he would corrupt his, his ibadah through the desire of praise from, from others. He couldn't stop it, for example, that um, every time after he performs one, one good deed, he needs to tell somebody in, because he needs to enjoy the praise coming from the other person and so on. However, yes, uh, in the sense that inwardly, yes, and, uh, if he is uh, uh, inwardly, he is uh, a, a hypocrite in that he hides his rejection of the religion of Islam. He hides the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and makes apparent to other people that as if he is a true Muslim, 
Now this person is a kafir in reality. This person is a kafir who hides. Uh, this person is a, a let us say, a, a disbeliever who hides his disbelief. Yes, but what Imam Ahmad bin Zain is here saying is that the nifaq here is the nifaqul amal, a corruption of his amal, not the corruption of aqidah necessarily. As for the person who is, as we said, ghairul mukhlis, yes, the, the one who, who in his ibadah suffers from the corruption of riya. Yes, this is man qasada bi amalihi ghaira wajinna. Yes, to intend his amal for the sake of any other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the way to remove this, the way to cure ourselves from this is to begin at a more fundamental level. That is the, at the level of the seeking of knowledge. Yes, as Imam al-Ghazali said in the Bidaya, there are three classes of knowledge seekers. That for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to remove his ignorance, to improve the station between him and his Lord. This is the class which is acceptable uh, and becomes the, 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 the one who is able to protect his intention in this regard is amongst the faizin, amongst the victorious in the afterlife. The second class is the one who intends for his knowledge worldly benefits. Yes, either in order to earn an income, in, in, in order to, to receive praise and so on and so forth. But while he, he does all these things, recognizes that that is not the proper way of doing it, that he is in the wrong. But out of weakness, he does that. And he intends to make tawbah, he intends to repent from that. So he is in a dangerous situation. If he persists in this path and death overtakes him, then he will be amongst those who suffer damnation. But on the other hand, if his repentance is quick, and he corrects his, his capital with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he may be classed among the first. Yes, because as Allah, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, A person who repents from his sins is as if he has not done no wrong. In the third category are those who intend for, for knowledge, mm, the worldly things, yes, to compete with others, to establish his importance in society uh, to gain the, uh, let us say, the ornaments of the world while thinking that he is in the right. Now, this is more difficult. This is what is called in the uh, in the classical terminology, the jahlul murakkab. Yes, it is a, a compounded ignorance because it's uh, a, a simple form of ignorance can be remedied by instruction. But a compounded ignorance is an ignorance of a person who does not know that he does not know, or who is in the wrong but thinks he is in the right. So therefore, he has no intention of, uh, of changing himself. And then he continues the next line, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ مُصَدِّقًا بِقَلْبِهِ فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ So if you are not ikhlas, then you are a munafiq, yani, a munafiqul amal. Yes, you are a hypocrite, you are a liar with this, uh, in, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second type, if inwardly, you are not a musaddiq. If inwardly you do not perform, you are not really certain that this is really required of you, that this is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, uh, that you say that I, uh, you take lightly that which is wajib and you perform uh, uh, the, the ma'asiyah uh, willfully uh, disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you become a kafir wal iyadubillah. Wa amma man adhar al-tasdiq wal-iman wa abdar al-kufr wal-juhud wa huwa outwardly uh, displays uh, tasdiq in a verification by deeds and displays his faith in Allah but hides his, his state of kufr or disbelief and he hides his, uh, let us say, his disobedience or his, his um, uh, willful disobedience against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then this is the nifaq of the etiqat, yes, the corruption of the etiqat wa niyadubillah. All right. Um, do we have, still have time, Hussein? Yes, inshallah. Two more minutes or, yeah, I just want to say that. We if, have 10 minutes, did you say? Uh, around that, yes. If anyone of okay, you have questions, inshallah, you can, you can. 
you can you can post it in the group. If there is yeah. question, we can proceed with question. But I think you can continue for a little bit more, inshallah. All right then, inshallah. So the next section covers the discussion on iman, yes, or faith. Wa aslul iman. Uh, al iman means verification by the heart. It's such a beautiful uh, faith, isn't it, Islam? That um, outwardly, you are required to become. Uh, you're required to observe uh, goodness, yes? Outwardly, you're required to abstain from doing wrong. But this outward manifestation of Iman, yes, has a, a fundamental internal requirement. The internal requirement is that you have to have internally acceptance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your Lord. Yes? Tasdiku bil qalb wa bihi yanjul abd min al khuludi fil nar. It is through the verification by the heart, through the sincerity of your heart, yes, in the in your inward, in 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 your deepest, uh, let us say, reality. Let us say, when you affirm the existence of Allah, when you affirm His lord lordship, you. This is how a servant becomes saved, becomes rescued from eternity in the hellfire. Now listen to that. Yes, becoming rescued from the eternal. Damnation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the khulud bin nar, these are matters of the unseen. Yes, these are matters which are, which we affirm even though none of our five senses has experienced it. Yes, meaning to say the eyes have not seen hellfire, nor have our ears felt, yes, uh, the, 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 the smell of uh, hellfire. None of our senses have experienced it, and we have not seen its traces. Yes, in the in the realm of the seen. Yes, it is not something that is to be found through the scientific method. Uh, yes, observation and so on. It is not something that is proven through the scientific method, through logical and rational analysis. It, it is merely through trust of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's verses. Yes, through the signs that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala reveal in the Quran, we trust Him. Yes, and this trust is such found is, is such a, a strong foundation in our life that our honesty, our sincerity, our kindness and goodness is built upon this. And this is why you know when we when we look at the hadith of the Prophet, where he mentions uh, where he begins with man kana billah, whoever has iman in Allah subhanahu wa taala and the afterlife, yes, then you have to do certain things. Yes, the, the requirements of iman include an yaqul khairan. That you only say nice things, or otherwise keep quiet. Yes, awliyas mud. Man kana yuminu billah wal yomil akhir. Whoever believes in Allah subhanahu wa taala in the afterlife, he is required. She is required to be kind to her neighbors, to be kind to her guests. Yes, man kana yuminu billah wal yomil akhir. Wala yuminu ahadukum, and you have not truly come to attain the station of iman. Hatta yakuna hawa hutabaan di majid tubihi until his desire has become submissive to that which I have brought in the Sharia. So that means to say, how how do we attain to this to this special gift from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? Iman ultimately is an amana. Yes, it is a a sort of trust Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala bestows upon your heart. So I, either you take care of it. Yes, and allow it to flourish, and allow your actions to flourish, or you desert it. And if you desert this iman, gradually it becomes and darkened. It becomes uh, gradually unable to manifest in goodness. Although it may remain, even uh, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, it may remain to the size of you know, an atom's worth, yes, or something small like that. Walayak fi ay ayu tasdik. It is not uh, this verification is not any type. Uh, it's not just a verbal verification. Yes, it is a, a specific type type of verification. First, you have to verify. Yes, al iman ubi jami ima ulima. Everything that is known to have been brought by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So that is why amongst the ranks of human beings, the best of them in iman uh, are the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Because they know very well uh, the Prophet, 
and they know very well what he claims. They know very well, yes, the the the, the, the reports coming from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And amongst them, as have been agreed by the community of the Ahlus Sunnah, is uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq. Yes, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, the truthful one, affirms all that was brought by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this term Siddiq, yes, truthfulness, is also uh, related with sadaqah. Yes, sadaqah is uh, charity. But it is conceptually related with truthfulness because you would verify by your deeds what you have, what you hold on truly to your hearts. How many a time that uh, that uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as has given away the entirety of his wealth for the sake of uh, to prove his love to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and His Prophet. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said about him that uh, the rest of the community uh, they taraddud that they were in doubt at first or that they uh, they tremor at first when when offered the religion of islam but sayyidina abu bakr as siddiq never had doubt yes from the beginning of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam offer unto him that's that's the yes verification by deeds by speech of what is affirmed by the heart yes now certainly what what has happened with our community is 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 that the, the iman becomes weakened in terms of its manifestation because the knowledge uh, is now undergoing a crisis, isn't it? Whereas earlier communities would have been raised by the by the Quran um, in terms of understanding its requirements and contents, and after that by the books of Hadith, yes, the statements of the Prophet. So they knew ev they knew a lot, uh, a large aspect of that which was brought brought by the Prophet, and they affirm it continuously. So that that is the degree of their iman. Yes. Uh, as for verifying by, by, by the tongue, the scholars differ regarding it. There are those who said that it is uh, that you that the verification by the uh, by, by the tongue is required yes, for the truth of your iman. And there are those who said that in truth uh, the verification by the tongue or the utterance of your iman is not the requirement of the uh, the validity of iman. However, it is the requirement for the validity of the rules and laws of the religion only. Yes, because uh, uh, matters pertaining to marriage, matters pertaining to inheritance, yes, and um, a prayer upon the individual if he were to, uh, to, to pass away and so on, and also to be, to be buried in the cemeteries of the Muslims. Uh, and uh, also the, the permissibility of praying behind the person. Now this, these things govern the, the, the requirements of, uh, or is governed by the requirement of uh, verification by tongue. But Iman ultimately is the beautiful secret kept within. Amal Amal, Fashartu Kamalu Iman. As for the Amal, the deeds, yes, uh, these are the, the fruits. Yes, they are the requirements for the perfection of Iman. Yes, Iman is, is, uh, exists in degrees. And in some, it is more perfect than in, in others. It is said by, by the Prophet وسلم, about uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq that, you know, if the community of the believers, yes, were to, the iman of the community of the believers would be, would be placed on one side of the scale, and on the other side of the scale is placed the, the, uh, the iman of Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Sayyidina Abu Bakr's iman would still be heavier like that. Uh, so uh, this, this iman, will manifest itself, you know, uh, when the, the opportune time comes out, yes? However, as for the, the rest of us, yes, the, the, the followers of the, of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we wish to strive to the completion of Iman, because isn't, it, isn't Iman and its perfection and completion that which is worthy to strive for in the life of this world? Because if you think about all the other goods, they are all perishing. Yes, they are all perishables. Uh, if uh, you are talking about food items, yes, once you consume them, then they are gone. If you're not talking about goods, either we will part with them or they will part with us. But as for Iman, that is truly, yes, the proper investment that, uh, that is the, the very reason of our existence, yes. So therefore, فَشَرْتُ kamalil iman لَا شَرْتْ uh, certainly, the amal, the, the outward manifestation of the deeds, is not a requirement for the validity of iman. 
but it's a requirement for its perfection. And who wouldn't strive for the perfection? Yes, wa mukammil wa mutammim lahu. It perfected, it completes your iman. Whoever, therefore, verifies by the heart. And then, but his limbs do not, do not submit to the requirements of the heart. But imanuhu sahih. His iman is still correct. Except that it is, uh, let us say, uh, it has some chinks in it. It has some, some weak points to it. It is, uh, if you believe, you know, if you, put, if you observe it, yes, about, about Iman, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you know, that, uh, that whoever sees uh, uh, an action of Munkar ought to change it, ought to oppose it with his hands, meaning to say yeah, that you ought to change it. And if not, then with your tongue, meaning to say through words of advice. And if not, then you must oppose it through your heart. That is a, a weak manifestation of Iman, which is sometimes uh, required, I suppose, from time to time, depending on the situation. Well, Imanu Yazidu Now, the, the completion, the, the external aspect of Iman, it increases through obedience and worship, through the Sohbatu Salihin, yes, through sitting with the, with the good, through contemplating the, the verses of the Quran. Through uh, the sessions of zikir with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And do not think, you know, that, that uh, it, 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 Iman's uh, completion and perfection becomes decreased. It becomes dull, yes, through the performance of ma'asiyah. So don't, don't think lightly, yes. Uh, sometimes, you know, we living in our condition today, yes, uh, our eyes continue to... Uh, to to sin, our our bodily members continue to sin. Sometimes, when the heart is so insensitive, we can no longer distinguish between the major and the minor sins. And unfortunate for some, they measure the the things which are okay and which are not okay based on their own whims, not based on the command of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Yes. Wa ida tuliyat alaihim ayatuhu zadatuhum iman. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala said in the Quran. Uh, the believers are those that when the verses, when the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is recited unto them, their iman, their, their desire for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said that he is the one who um, increases yes, the iman over the iman that they already have. Yeah, yazdadu ladina amanu imana. The, in, the, in, in certain uh, circumstances, Allah said that in order that he may increase the iman of those who already have iman. All right. So I think that is the, the extent of the discussion on iman. Do we wish to continue a bit more or do we want to open for questions and answers? If anyone have got any questions? I saw uh, Amati Saida Afsana raise her hand before. You want to ask question? Assalamualaikum, Ustaz. Assalamualaikum. Um, I just want to clarify on the iman and certainty, kan? How how is the relationship? Yeah. If you can explain further, thank you, Ustaz. Yes. Um. So as we said, um, iman as to who. Al amnu, as the, the root word of his uh, iman is uh, al amnu, meaning security, to feel at peace. Yes. This comes as a result of certainty. And this certainty is when the heart is secure, yes, in the belief of that which is brought by the Prophet. The Prophet Muhammad brought to us the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the wahi, yes, the revelation in the Quran. So to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means also to affirm uh, the other requirements like qada and qadar, uh, to believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the sole agent in the entirety of existence, that everything that happens happens as a result of his will and command. Uh, and, uh, and that which happens, nothing escapes his knowledge. That is the, the foundation of, of Iman. Now, this Iman is in different, in, in different people in different degrees. Yes, 
there are those who merely believe this, uh, you know, as, as, as something which is vague, yes? It, as something that, that does not spur them unto action, yes? Uh, meaning to say, it, it, it doesn't push them to, to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, wa'bud rabbaka hatta ya'tiyakal yaqeen. Worship your Lord until certainty reaches you. Now this certainty, as Imam al-Ghazali were to clarify in the Kitab al-Ilm, the Book of Knowledge in the Ihya uh, al-Mudid, there are two types of certainty. Yes. One is the certainty which is the discourse of the uh, mutakallimi, the theologians. The theologians divided certainty into, uh, or, or rather included the discourse on certainty as a matter of knowledge. Uh, in other words, certainty is a condition in which the heart believes in something and is able to reject any other alternative explanation. Yes, uh, it is situated in the discourse with regards to that also, what we call conjecture. Yes, you conjecture something if you are inclining towards a certain belief, but you're unable to reject the other possibility. And the weakest of that is, uh, weaker than that is that which is in a state of doubt. Yes, a shock. When in between two posi uh, positions, you are unable to tell between one and the other. But even weaker than that is waham. When you have no reason to believe in something, but you uh, you incline towards it as, as a matter of your, your heart's desire, let us say. So the station of certainty in the discourse of the theologians, therefore, is a, is a matter of knowledge. Yes, like you can have certainty that um, um, certain uh, of certain events that happen in the realm of phenomena, you know, like mm, water boils at 100 degrees. Nobody can challenge that if, if you have sufficient knowledge. Nobody can challenge, uh, you know, our belief in certain mathematical and logical truths. Yes, you can have certainty of certain mathematical truths, like, you know, the, that 2 plus 2 equals 2, 4, and so on. However, uh, with regards to belief in religion, there is an element of certainty that, that pertains to this, you know, that uh, your heart is certain that the Quran can, cannot be the, the works of the hands of mankind. The heart cannot, uh, the, the Quran cannot be the result of the work of a, a community or a committee. The Quran uh, is certainly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it possesses miracles. Yes, uh, it, it is a miracle and it is productive of miracles. So therefore, you know that it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, this certainty creates a certain, a certain sense of peace in the heart. So therefore, Iman and Yaqeen, sometimes in some of the ahadith, are used interchangeably. Yes, because Iman means certainty in the matters of the unseen. Uh, certain of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Iman in this case, yes, uh, uh, in the discussion of the Sufis, on the other hand, in the discussion of the ulama, uh, that Imam al-Ghazali is citing in the Ihya al buddin he's saying that there is the, the increase in certainty with regards to um, belief with, uh, with regards to belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Iman, like how um, for example discussion about the nature of the ephemerality of this world, uh, the discussion about the, the, the reality of the afterlife, the cruel mouth Yes, the, the contemplation of death, all these things produces and increases your state of Iman. Now, what Imam al-Ghazali wants to point out in, the, in this aspect of the, the increase and decrease of Iman and Yaqeen is that we have to strive yes, for excellence in Iman, although its foundation is, is epistemic, its foundation is, is intellectual, but its, its manifestation requires that which is more than intellectual. It is intellectual as well as spiritual, and it requires a fundamental change in one's ethical bearing. And so I hope I answered your question. Sure, inshallah. Uh, is there any more question? Ustaz, as you said, Iman increases with Ibadah and Amal. Does it mean that? Yeah. We need to force ourselves to do amal first before iman arrives. Well, of course, uh, uh, 
we have to be sure that in Islam, between between il, between knowledge and amal, are not dichotomies, meaning to say that one and the other, uh, or one or the other, because uh, there is a hadith, I think, of, of the Prophet وسلم, or perhaps it is the statement of the Salah, uh, uh, which is uh, attributed to the Prophet, is that the best ibadah, uh, khairu ibadah, the best form of ibadah uh, that a servant may have in approaching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is knowledge. Yes, yeah, so it is a combination of both. Yes, the uh, there is an aspect that that that, that requires oneself uh, to perform the ibadah, especially that it is wajib. Certainly, there's no choice in that. Mm. But at the same time, you must uh, understand also the nature of your soul. It's it's animalistic and it's it's uh, intelligential spiritual aspect. So the increase of iman is is brought through you know several things. Sometimes it is in, in the performance of ibadah in jama'ah. Sometimes it is in the recitation of the Quran. So you have to, uh, you have to perform the, the, the work of muhasaba in that sense, in perspective. Uh, to read the lives of the sahaba, to read the lives of the salihin. These are all means to increase uh, your iman. And uh, we know also some of the sahaba reported that some of them complained that when they were together with the Prophet وسلم, they felt that their iman was at an all-time high. And then when they returned home, you know, they, they do not feel the same degree of energy. Then the Prophet وسلم, said, you know, that uh, if the, the quality of your iman is the same as you are with us and when you are not with us, then you would be shaking hands with the angels. Yes, Meaning to say there's, there's degrees of iman that, that we should strive for. But Alhamdulillah, yes, as, as some of the awliya, uh, some of the people in the al Ba'alabi tradition said, uh, in truth, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's path, uh, or the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has remained the same. The Quran remains with us. The sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam remains with us. The practices of the salaf, uh, knowledge of the practices of the salaf remains with us. The possibility of uh, of of uh, traversing the path remains with us. What has changed is, oh, is ourselves, is our sincerity in, in, in following those things. Rather. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. I think that's a good ending. Uh, so I go start. I, I have a question. Go on. If one here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how about the new age movement? You know that the new age movement, they, they, um, what we say they, they, they claims that they have the spirituality, um, uh, but they are not according to any religions. They are not according to, uh, Islam. Um, I am, I'm a bit little worried, uh, in the business classes uh, in Malaysia because some of them say that iman is is different and also uh, the the spiritual they are taught. Uh, to be very efficiency, they say that this spiritual will attain uh, um, efficient and good business are different. So, what's your opinion on this? Yes. <laughs> well, um, yes. Waman yabtari, you know, raira al Islami din and palayuk baluminhu. Whoever chooses other than the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has outlined, then it is not accepted from him. Um, the truth of the religion of Islam is not measured by productivity, efficiency, joy, um, you know, bouts of, of uh, let us say, uh, you know, bouts of pulse. Uh, false sense of elatedness. Uh, uh, these things could be, you know, temporary, isn't it? Uh, sometimes, um, you know, this this movement, you know, spirituality without religion is, is speaking in very vague terms. What is it that they mean by 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 spirituality? Uh, if by spirituality they mean, uh, you know. A, an affirmation that human beings are in reality spirit. Yes, uh, um, that 
that is not denied, isn't it? But how do we know that um, you know this this experience will last? How do we know that it is not just one other traps of shaitan? Yes, because um, it could be that a person who, who who suffers from the the gurur in this case, the the deception of this false spirituality does not know that he is really wasting, um, you know, his capital that he could have earned the rida of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, he could have approached Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, and gained intimacy with his Lord. Instead, he prefers uh, to go down through through this uncertain path, yes, through this vague path. And uh, so what if, if, if they say they claim an increase in in productivity and, and efficiency in, in, in the worldly matters because it, it doesn't answer the, 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 the real question of our identity. It doesn't answer the question of um, you know, our purpose of life. It's just a means of, of you know, seeking an, another form of catharsis, isn't it? Because they, they suffer from a certain tragic sense of life where life is inherently meaningless. So therefore, they resort to, to, to things that distract them. And who knows, you know, one form of spirituality then is followed by another form of spirituality. And how many of them have been deluded? That when they have no limits or when they don't establish upon themselves the limits of religion, they might end up, you know, performing, you know, ethical, um, ethical crimes, yeah, spiritual crimes. Yes, they, they, they end up victimizing others uh, or victimizing themselves, yes. How can we speak about the uh, spirituality when we don't recognize the creator and the bestower of that spirit, when we don't recognize the, our sense of indebtedness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes, alhamdulillah for us, you know, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala maintain the state of iman. Uh, the author of the Aqaid and Nasafi said that if a person uh, uh, achieves the state of iman, he should say, Ana mu'min, alhamdulillah. I am a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All praise due to him. But he shouldn't say, Ana mu'min, insha'Allah. I am mu'min if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so wills. Because that statement would suggest that, you know, lamma yadukhulil iman fi kulubikum. That the iman has not entered upon your heart. If iman as a trust is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, you know, we have, to, we have to be jealous of it. We have to guard it very well. We have to ensure that it doesn't become, you know, because shaitan is, is a deceiver, yes? That the shaitan being the enemy of mankind will employ every means at his disposal to deviate the sons of Adam, the children of Adam alayhi salam from the path that is set out and established by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the shaitan challenges himself. In fact, he is adamant to prove that you know, uh, that few of the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes, will be able to remain in a state of ikhlas. Yes, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that as for my servants who are sincere, yes, then the shaitan will have no power over them. So we say these things, inshallah, yes, when we are studying the path of the religion of Islam and, and its clarity and its, uh, its truthfulness, as it is coming from the truthful Prophet وسلم, and the generations that have brought it to us. Yes, we are teaching it in order that we remain steadfast uh, on this path and, and not to follow uh, the many other paths because some of these many other paths, uh, if not all of them other than Islam, you know, it may lead to nowhere and it may lead to being further and further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu alam, Allah protect Imam hearts and our children. And, and all the believers in, and the Muslims in the world, inshallah, and may Allah guide uh, to him uh, those whom he wills, inshallah. I mean, inshallah. Can, can I ask another question? One last one, maybe? Ahlan wa sahlan. How can we check our, our state of Iman, like today or tomorrow, for example? Just to make sure it's not decreasing. Oh, do you mean like a WhatsApp group? <laughs> uh, well, um, demand is, is not like you know, it's not like petrol. You can you can run down at the station and then 
you just find out if there's people queuing up, that means there's petrol, and if there's no one queuing, chances are there's no petrol for the day. But um, Iman is something inter internal. Yes, Iman is a trust given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, uh, certainly, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَنْ جَهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا Whoever struggles in our path, then we will guide him and we will show him our ways. We need to say the paths that we allow him to, to reach our pleasure and our rahmah. The best means of, of protecting and safeguarding our iman is to secure it from anything that may harm it. Yes, and that which, as, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has, has uh, established for us and as, uh, has been, um, as has been, uh, let us say, um, summarized by our scholars, it is in the continue, uh, continuous performance of that which are commanded, we are commanded to do and the continuous or avoidance of that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbade us from doing. And, you know, to, to read about the life of the Salihin, there are some of them among the Salihin uh, it is taqwa ultimately that protects iman. Yes, taqwa is the, the, the act of performing that which Allah commands and to abstain from that which he pro prohibits. Uh, and its, uh, its foundation is consciousness and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, there are those yes, that, we, that we read about them uh, who may have just passed, you know, passed away in, in the past few years. You know that there are reports of the Salihin who said that uh, one of them, Al Habib Ali uh, bin Muhammad bin Salim uh, Al Attas uh, bin Salim bin Abu Bakr Attas, many people have heard from him and have seen and observed from him uh, that he said that I do not know. He said I do not know, nor do I remember um, having ever done any ma'asiyah to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala nor do I know, nor remember ever having left all that which is obligated upon me. But that type of persistence, that type of struggle, yes, that type of commitment is the true sign of Iman. That you are ever aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's presence, that you are so fearful of, of, of you know, of, uh, of transgressing any limit. And if you have transgressed some of the limits, yes. Um, Allah wa said that the believers, yes, those who are destined for safety in the akhirah, are those that do not incline towards evil misdeeds. And if they do attend to some of these things, it is through, you know, a slip of, of, of a behavior that occasionally you might fall under those things. And that too is, all, is, is met with tawbah. It, it is how, so iman is, is a beautiful state of the heart that is, that is conscious of its praja, or rather of its delicate status. It is a great gift, yes? If you are given a great gift from a, a magnificent king, you know that, that, that you like to please him. And, and you know that he will come to visit and he asks to see that great gift that he has bestowed upon you. Certainly you will take great care yes, not to break it, not to tarnish it, and you will great, put great care that it is, it is uh, well taken care of in your homes. And now that is the case with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having blessed us with, with the blessing of Iman. Taqwa is that which protects it. Yes, taqwa is the one, as the Prophet sallallahu said, that Iman uriyan, that Iman is, is, is naked, meaning, or, or rather it is exposed. Yes, but, but taqwa in the sense is, is that which protects it. Yes, so you need knowledge, you need taqwa, and, and you will do all that which is possible at your disposal. Yes, in, in order that, that you may survive this world with your iman, uh, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises a great many things. Amongst them, I think, وَالَّذِينَ amanu, Yes, Allah said, وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَاتَّبَعَتْهُمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ Whoever has iman, yes, meaning to say whose iman is sound and secure, and then he does amal sal, and his progeny, his children follow suit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Al-Haqna bihim, 
then the children shall be joined together with the fathers and the forefathers without uh, without removing or without uh, you know without removing anything from from either account let us say in other words it's it's a great thing to look forward to isn't it to, to be joined together with our forefathers uh, and our children and their children and so on until uh, until yom kiyama uh, in the heaven that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created specifically for the believers mufattahatan abwa whose doors are open uh, whose gates are, are wide open for the believers uh, whose beautiful scent you know can be detected from as far away as 500 years of a distance of traveling you know whose beauty is such that no eye has ever seen and and no ears has ever heard of and no heart has ever crossed in terms of imagination what what it is like to be together with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the believers and certainly that is something to look forward to wasari allah says you know and rush to the forgiveness of your Lord. And also, once you rush to the forgiveness of your Lord, you may also look forward to the heaven that He has promised. Yes. A, a, a heaven whose wide expanse is such that it, it is in between the heavens and the earth, which is prepared for those who have taqwa in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the very good and and knowledge and deep session, inshallah. Um I think it's we can end this with a dua from, from you. Yeah, inshallah. Um أم لا يوافي نعمه ويكافي مزيده يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك ولعزيز سلطانك اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا ومولانا محمد صلاة تحيا بها روحي وتنشط بها جوارحي ويقوى بها قلبي ويسلس سرها في أولادي وأحبابي وأكون بها سعيدا مسعودا اللهم يا من وفق أهل الخير للخير وعانهم عليه وفقنا للخير وعين عليه ربنا لا تؤاخذنا ان نسينا او اخطانا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا اسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقه لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا انت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه وقنا عذاب النار بفضل سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين امين رب العالمين ان شاء الله see you again next week ان شاء الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته.